Hello, I'm currently on holiday in Australia and it's just snowed, which is a bit strange really. But a couple of weeks before I arrived here, a very nice chap called Alex from Wheels magazine wrote me an email saying, if you're coming all the way to Australia, shouldn't you try the most Australian vehicle of all? It's called the HSV Malou, and I thought, well, even on holiday, I've got to try it, haven't I? So I'm going to do just that, but I'm not going to resort to crude stereotypes. So I'm going to don my bluey. I got my Vegemite, and I got my can of VB. There is no greater honour than beginning the voiceover description of a very fast car with the news that it can tow 1,600 kilograms and has a payload capacity of 400 kilograms. But that's the Malou GTS for you. It mixes commercial vehicle language and performance speak like nothing else. It has a flat bed lid and floor protection for the load bay, but it also has torque vectoring. It has 576 horsepower from a supercharged V8, extra transmission cooling, a standard LSD, and it'll hit 60 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds. It weighs 1,875 kilograms and it costs 88,000 Aussie dollars, which is around 44,000 pounds sterling. This car is all the sideways plumber will ever need. Sadly, I didn't get to drive the super ute on the road, but we spent some time in the GTS saloon with the same powertrain, and I just loved it. I know the car comes to the UK badge as a Vauxhall, but that's just not cool. A big Aussie four-door with nearly 600 horsepower should have a Holden badge. It isn't perfect, but down under it costs a fraction of the price of an M5, and it's dripping with character. I just cannot believe that the Aussie V8 will soon be dead. They are some of the most infectious cars I've driven, and much as the concept of a small pickup being a collector's item sounds crazy, I think the Malou GTS will be just that. Okay, so, here I am, a little pommy driving a ute. I love utes. They just look cool, don't they? But the concept of a super ute, a super crazy, a bit lost in the head ute, well, that is something else. So HSV, to celebrate the fact that these brilliant cars are going to die soon. I'm making 250 of these things, 430 kilowatts. We'll work out what that is in old money later on. First of all, let's try this really cool little circuit, see what it's like to drive. Got myself an automatic version, which I suppose is not the purest choice. The purest ute, I presume, has the manual gearbox, but let's see what it's like driving this thing for a straight lap. Feels quite heavy, there's a bit of understeer there but the motor, wow. Talk, talk, talk. And every time you look in the rearview mirror, there's this great big canopy out the back. The balance is pretty good, actually. Traction, given there's no weight out the back, is surprisingly impressive. Um, but then it has got an American rear axle on it, hasn't it? So it's pretty clever. You can really hustle this thing. You have the sense that all the weight's over the front. You really do, of course you do but it stops whopping great big brakes. And of course, I could be doing this with two adult male sheep in the back. The idea for the ute was, in the 30s and the 40s, Ford needed something for the farmer to take the missus to church on a Sunday, but then go to the market on a Monday. Think of it as a sort of precursor to the crossover. It's the ultimate crossover. And of course, in being authentic, it's much cooler than any of the modern crossovers. Wicked little thing. Wicked little thing. You can just leave it in third and the torque just fires you out. Okay then. Oh, it was inevitable, wasn't it? It was inevitable, really. What a piece of kit. It's got a really nice locking diff in it. And um, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that this thing has spent a lot of time in its development life doing what I'm doing now. Which is obviously colossally immature. Oh, it's brilliant fun. By the way, did I tell you that I'm supposed to be a bit on holiday at the moment? That was it. I spoke to Robbo, I wanted to have a chat with him, and then Alex from Wheels Magazine said, Well, look, come along and have a go in at Maloo. And I thought, Well, why not? So, yeah, this is a day of my holiday. 
Can you think of a better way to spend it than cocking about in a super ute? You know what? It's technically not bad at all. It really is not bad. There's the big smoky one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to stop for a minute. This is a cracking vehicle. I'd describe it as the perfect seventh car. The man that, or the woman that owns this car is going to have quite a toy cupboard already. But this will be the coolest thing they own. The super ute the run-out ute, the one that celebrates what I think is one of the coolest cars on the planet. HSV, I salute you. This is quite a machine.